Today we're going to review how to beat the Season 1 Magma Demons in Call of Dragons. Because this was, in my opinion, one of the easier fights, but you have to actually know the mechanics and get your group really moving together to get the win. So in this video, I'll show you exactly how to get easy wins against both the regular and elite Magma Raids. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskel Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Call of Dragons. And what we're going to do in this video is give you a complete guide on how to get easy wins against the Magma Giants, or really Magma Demons, in Season 1. And this was a very fun fight, it does take some coordination, but once you're doing the coordination, it's like, bro, this is the easiest thing on the face of the earth. But it is a very rewarding fight. Now, if you do take the Elite Raid and are the first ones in your server to do so with a time under eight minutes, you also get this pretty sweet avatar frame. But if I show you, these magma demon layers are actually in all of the different zones. In fact, th this one we, we took is in zone one. If I actually go to the behemoth overview, I can show you that there are magma demon layers all over the place. Every zone has at least one magma demon layer. So you may be near one of them, and the buffs that they offer are strong. The one that we took is plus 2% damage dealt and a 5-member limit boost. There is another flavor of Magma Demon Layer. Um, let's see here. In Zone 3, here's one of them. Building Engineering of 10%, Hero Stamina Limit Boost of 5%, and also Alliance member limit of plus five is pretty big. Those are the two flavors of Magma Demon Lair. And you see, even the Zone Ones could potentially have different versions of the Magma Demon Lair and, and what buffs they ultimately give. So keep in mind that buffs from Behemoths don't stack if they're the exact same buffs. So for example, if we took another one of these 2% all damage, um, magma demons, it wouldn't actually do anything for us. It wouldn't give us more all damage. They don't stack. All right, so if we get to the layer itself, how the heck does this thing work? Well, we'll scoot back on over to that zone one magma demon layer, and I can show you that there are, in fact, four bosses you need to fight at once in this fight. There are four of them, one in each corner, the magma manipulator, the magma devastator, also the Magma Reaper, and lastly, the Magma Devourer. Now, their location will randomize at the start of the fight, and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So if you're thinking, oh, you know, I see one standing here at the start, no, it doesn't work that way. They do randomize at the start of the fight, and their health pool is important to keep in mind because in this fight, when you kill one of the bosses, the others will get stronger. So ideally, you want to DPS all of them down at about the same time. But what stops you from doing that? Well, the core mechanic in this fight that drives the whole dang thing is that these bosses are applying a debuff onto you. Each one of them has a unique debuff, okay? And that unique debuff is very, very critical. In fact, let me show you all their abilities. If we look at one of the uncaptured uh, behemoth sites here, we can see the abilities for each one of these different magma demons listed. And the key ability that you need to be worried about is the marks that each of them delivers. Every 18 seconds, you get a mark that lasts a full 90 seconds. And when you have five of these marks on you, the next time you would get a mark from that demon, it will instantly kill you. This is a big deal. And if there are no legions in the area of the demon at the time that it would apply a mark, then everyone in the whole layer gets a mark from that demon. Okay, so let me clarify all this. You've got four demons. Each of them is applying marks and each mark is separate. So what this means is basically your group needs to move around so that you never get too many marks from one demon because if you get five and then get hit again with a sixth, boom, you instantly die. So that's really, really bad. But it also means that every single one of these needs to be tanked at the same time. 
or at least fought at the same time. Because if there's nobody in the radius of where they apply this mark, then everybody's going to die. Um, they're all getting marks, okay? And the whole layer gets marks. That adds up really, really fast. The other thing I mentioned earlier that you can actually see in the boss abilities over here is that um, when a magma demon is defeated, all the remaining magma demons gain a stack of magma covenant increasing their attack and defense. So you don't actually have to kill all of them at the exact same time, but you want them to be roughly even in health. Also, there are mana stones that drop that can heal you. Every time a magma demon loses 20% of its hit points, its layer produces a healing mana stone, which can be gathered to heal lightly wounded units. And after 10 minutes, by the way, this thing hits in rage and your time is up. That's it. It's GG. So in order to actually defeat all four bosses, and to try to keep them roughly even in health. What we did is we created a rotation. There's a rotation of tanks and there's a rotation of damage. Let me show you exactly what that looks like. So here we are practicing the dance that would take place during this battle. There are four main tanks marked with blue shields. There are four off tanks marked with yellow hearts. And there is a DPS leader for each group marked with a different marker. And you basically are either a tank or a damage player, right? And you're going to follow your damage leader if you are a damage player. And if you're a tank, you go through a special rotation. The rotation we did is that you would fight one demon, then you would swap with another tank to fight a different demon, and then you would go to the center where you could then recover for a bit. I'll explain that role a little bit, but when the main tanks go to the center, the off tanks shoot out to cover the demons. And then the off tanks switch with each other, and then the off tanks go to the center again. <laughs> and the main tanks step back out and start tanking. Meanwhile, again, the DPS is just going clockwise. Every time the tanks rotate, the DPS rotates. And when did we choose to rotate? We chose to rotate at three stacks. I think we could have rotated at four stacks and that would have been fine. The thing we wanted to absolutely avoid was people dying because they took a sixth stack. That's what we wanted to avoid. You can get five, but it's when you take your sixth stack that uh, you ultimately die. And those stacks, I think at the regular raid, they apply every 18 seconds. In the elite raid, I think it's every 12 seconds. So that's why we did three, okay? And that's the rotation. That's the dance. It's actually pretty simple. So now that I've explained it one time, let me show show it to you again. The tanks will switch places. So here we go. The tanks switch places first. You can see the DPS is rotating clockwise, okay? Then the tanks will go to the center and be replaced by the off tanks, which are in yellow. And this is kind of easy to see when you when you watch this a second time, okay? So the blue shields are all going to go middle. The yellow hell hearts are all going to step out, all right? Then we'll do another practice rotation in a second. Again, the DPS is all just going clockwise. And I would just so strongly recommend that you do a dry run like this with your group. As long as nobody steps in the red circles around the bosses, they're not going to aggro. You can practice this, okay? The reality is that when you're actually fighting, you do need to be, you know, right on top of the bosses, more or less. Um, I will point out that if you bring mages, um, you probably want to step into the area of the boss to fight it, um, but you shouldn't bring mages. Like, everybody should bring marksmen. If you're DPS, bring marksmen. It's the answer, okay? If by the time magma demons roll around, you don't have marksmen leveled up, I don't know what to tell you. You must not have prioritized winning against behemoths because, like, that's the unit you use if you're DPS. If you're a tank, we just went no damage, like very, very low damage, high health recovery. So I used, you know, Nika with uh, Garwood, even though my Garwood's not all that great. He's got healing, so that was fine. Um, and your goal is not to do damage, but really just survive. And we brought taunt masks on all of our tanks. All right. So let's jump now to the actual attempt and you'll see all the markers. It'll be easier to see exactly what's happening. Here we go. First, uh, actually, technically, this was our second attempt on the elite raid. We almost won the first. Now, there is one other mechanic I want to tell you about. Each of these bosses does do some stuff that's slightly different. For example, this particular boss is going to put lava on the floor. You can see I'm tanking on the left. When there's lava on the floor, it's going to be really obvious. 
don't stand in the lava or you're dead. That applies to the DPS, that applies to the tanks. This is like really, really 101 level of rating in like any rating game ever. Don't stand in the poop. It's like one of the core mechanics of literally every rating game since the dawn of time. So don't stand in the poop is one key mechanic. Another key mechanic from one of the other ones is don't blow up your friends. So there's going to be a red circle that's put around two people. Um, and if you stand near someone else, oh, see, I have that now. Don't stand near your friends. So I move away from my friends. I don't blow them up. This is very simple. Now there's lava on the floor. I need to get out of the lava. I haven't noticed it yet, um, which is pretty bad. And then boom, oh, wait, I notice I get out of the lava. I took definitely some unnecessary damage. And you can see on the screen all the stacks applying, by the way. Those stacks, they flash up over everybody's head. And it happens, you know, pretty fast. We got three stacks. We did our first rotation. And in the bottom right, I think this demon is the most important one to get right. By the way, the time that you uh, grab the mana stones is when the tank is present and when you rotate. Everybody goes to the stone. Now, this one in the bottom right um, has acolytes that summon. And here they are. Boom. The acolytes have summoned. They go into the boss. You must kill the acolytes. If you're a DPS and you don't kill the acolytes, the boss will heal a stupid amount. It is dumb. Stop damaging the boss. Kill the acolytes. Stop damaging the boss. Kill the acolytes. Seriously, stop damaging the boss. Kill the acolytes. You may think that it's dumb that I had to say that three times, but I, I assure you, someone will not understand that you will lose if the acolytes go and heal the boss and they're not going to DPS the acolytes. They're just going to keep damaging the boss. I guarantee you. I, I fully guarantee you someone in your party will do that. So now we've done our third rotation. Um, Off tanks go to the middle. Now the, uh, sorry, the main tanks go to the middle. The off tanks go to uh, step in and tank. Now, what I'm not doing, because I didn't quite understand the fight fully at the time, but what I should have been doing is going and getting a mana stone from one of the other bosses that I did not tank. So you can see I'm standing in the middle because I'm just, I'm plenty healthy and I'm afraid of getting stacks. But what I should be doing is going to the two other demons, and I, I think I'll do this now. Nope, not yet. I should be going to the two other demons I didn't tank to get um, a stone, because even if they put a stack on me, each demon has their own stack type. So there's four different stack types, one for each type of demon that's being applied. It doesn't matter if I get stacks from the demons I'm not tanking because they'll fall off eventually. I'm only stepping in for a second to get a mana stone, okay? Remember, the stacks fall off after 90 seconds. Now, you can see the one that poops out lava. It's got a lot of lava on the ground. So, like, don't stand in the lava is very straightforward. Um, you can see I'm getting ready to step in to get a stone, um, I'm actually going to tank this one, so it's like a little sus that I'm going to step in to get this stone against one of the ones I am going to tank, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this anyways, probably. Boom, I see they go for the stone, I step in for a second, I get the heal, I step out. Easy clap, didn't get any stacks, GG easy, right? So that was actually pretty simple, but that's what your tanks should be doing when they're not tanking, is getting heals to get back to full health. Um, now, this fight is pretty fast, I mean, it was six minutes... Um, I have T5s, so I was pretty healthy. You can see we took out the Acolytes extremely fast in the bottom right. I step back into tank, and this is actually pretty important. In the video I showed you um, where we were practicing the rotation, there was one mistake we made, which is that we had our tanks going back to the last demon they had just fought, which meant you might not have actually had all your stacks fall off yet. All that to say, um, the rotation the tanks should do um, it should be like the first, the first boss they fight, the second boss to the middle, and then go back to that first boss they fought, then the second boss, then the middle. We had done it in our practice round the wrong way, which is we went first boss, second boss, middle, second boss, first boss, middle, okay? And that might sound like really nuanced if you haven't done the fight, but it's actually like super, super simple. The tanks cannot go back to the thing that they had recently tanked because the stacks might not have fallen off. Um, now, here you can see we go to the Mana Stone. Um, everybody comes with me that's DPS that just rotated in to get to the Mana Stone. We grab this thing. Um, pretty soon, the demons are going to start to die, and you can see their health is relatively even, with the exception being the Magma Demon, probably because he healed one time, maybe twice. So now the Acolytes are in. I'm probably screaming for the Acolytes to be killed. Not screaming, but you know, 
I'm like, acolyte, 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 acolyte. Um, until they're dead. Like, you, people aren't paying, you know, full attention. You got different levels of raiders going on in every raid, right? Um, so you got to just help everybody out, make sure it happens. Um, and now the demons are starting to die, which means they are getting stronger. That they're, they're getting stacks of attack and defense for every demon that dies. Um, so I step out. I rotate out at this point um, because it's my turn to rotate out. So I'm out of there. I think it, I could have actually DPS'd the one in the upper right had I fully understood um, how the stacks worked, but it doesn't really matter. It dies in a second here. And now I'm basically sitting out because I have too many stacks. I think I could have gone in if we were actually in a DPS race, which we weren't. We're like two minutes ahead of when we need to win here for the elite, but we got this thing. This thing's going down. At some point, I am just going to step in anyways because it's close enough. Um, and we are in GG territory. Now, it always triggers me when we say GG before we've actually won, but um, we're in that territory. Boom, we get it, and there it is. Boom, victory. Um, let me show you a little bit more about this fight and the report from the battle. Here's the report on what happened, okay? The Scourging Field Devourer's Mark did the most damage at 1 million. The Scourging Field Reaper's Mark did the next most damage at 900,000. The Scourging Field Devastator's Mark did 776,000 damage, and the Scourging Field Manipulator's Mark did 752,000 damage. It's possible the reason we're rotating at three stacks is because of how much damage these are ultimately dealing. So that is probably why we're rotating at three stacks and not letting that multiplier get higher. Um, if you look here, Reap was an ability that actually killed somebody. Uh, sucks to be the one person who died in the raid, by the way. <laughs> GG. Yikes. One person died. They died to reap. 676,000 damage. Um, and for some reason, when I'm scrolling here, it's dropping me all the bottom. Super weird. Um, otherwise, there's like not that much damage, right? So managing these marks is the key. And don't stand in the poop, right? S simple 101 level raid mechanics here. In terms of damage contributed, um, we did... I think have entirely marksmen for our damage. So marksman was where it was at. FUD did the most. 541,000 damage is kind of nuts. Then Loak at 513 and MP at 466. Trauma at 432. CEO at 427. Even as a tank, I was doing a pretty good job here of actually still doing some damage. I mean, my job is just to soak damage, but I did 71,600 damage. All right. Just soaking damage and also... You know, half the time I'm rotated out, not doing anything. So that's that's not bad. Um, but when you look through here, right, like your tanks should still be doing damage. These are also tanks. Um, I believe these are our off tanks right over here. Kyle, Heavenly, Riz, Behemoth, and Zacklin, I think are the four off tanks. Um, those dudes should be doing the least amount of damage. I believe that Adele, Sin, Captain, and I were the four main tanks. So our tanks are the basically the bottom contributors, which makes sense. If we flip this up to damage received, we should be on the higher end of things, but not at the top. So you see like Sin is up there on damage taken, Adele is up there on damage taken, I'm up there on damage taken. Some of that could just be that we're taking unnecessary damage, right? But ideally that's not the case. Um, but when you're rating, this report that you get every single time is very, 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 very critical. You should be looking at it to say, hmm, okay, wait a minute. So if we look down on, on the, you know, bottom DPS here, okay, uh, is there something that we need to do with those, you know, players that were on the bottom for DPS to get their DPS higher, for example? Um, and this is very critical because we lost the first attempt with literally like 6,000 health left on the Magma Demon on one of them. Like we killed all three and there was one left with 6,000 health. So like 6,000 more damage would have been the difference between win or lose, right? And you've got people that are doing, you know, 541,000 damage and you have people doing under 100,000 damage. It's like, okay, so what happened? Like what's going on? And some of that is that FA and MP I know have basically completely maxed accounts at this point with pretty much every hero, every artifact maxed. So like that could be a part of it. But things that contribute to damage include getting a rune, getting war frenzy, for the 3% attack boost, you just like scout something. Um, or you could just attack somebody in the field and then retreat before you even hit them. Um, and that'll give you War Frenzy, doesn't cost you mana. Um, 
You There are things like what talent build are you using? Okay, that's really big. Obviously, what commanders or heroes are you using? What march type are you using? Really adds up. But um, again, marksman is the choice. Um, Kanara and Nico paired together, probably Nico primary, Kanara secondary, is how you squeeze out the most damage possible. But you could also use Hosk, right? A lot of people will if they um, spend and have him maxed out. All in all, a very fun raid. I think very easy once you get the dance right. Um, and from there, it's just about having enough damage. If you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, consider subscribing to the channel. If you want to see the most difficult raid in the game, that is the Elite Necro. And I'll have a card for that in the end screen. We got, I believe, the world first after the global launch of the game for taking down the Elite Necro, which was pretty dope. We will always be pushing for firsts wherever we can in the Smash Squad. So again, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to see us uh, battling in Zone 3, I'll have a card in the end screen. It was one of the biggest fights that the game's ever had.